everyone, this is Danielle and welcome back to Passport on a Plate where I show you recipes to make you feel like you're traveling the world from the comfort of your very own kitchen. Today we're going to be making risotto, which is a dish that originates from Italy and it is a delicious creamy rice dish. Today we're going to be making it with butternut squash and goat cheese as well. Traditionally to make risotto, it does involve a lot of constant stirring and slowly adding your liquid. So today we're doing slow cooker risotto, which is super easy. We're just going to add our rice, vegetables into the slow cooker, let it sit for a few hours and our dish is gonna be ready. So let's grab our ingredients and let's get started. Before we get cooking, please remember to hit that red subscribe button right below the video and give this video a big thumbs up. I really do appreciate it. Your ingredients for this dish that we'll need today are a whole butternut squash. I'm going to show y'all how to prepare this, how to get the skin off and everything ready for our dish. If you don't want to worry about preparing a whole butternut squash, you can find pre-chopped butternut squash pieces at your local grocery store as well. We're going to be using low sodium chicken broth so that we don't oversalt our dish. We're going to be using some extra virgin olive oil, as well as two medium shallots. We've got some crumbled goat cheese. If you can't find crumbled goat cheese, regular goat cheese is okay as well, and you can just crumble it up. We've got some fresh sage, and we have our Boreo rice for our risotto as well. So this is gonna be a short grain rice, and it's gonna give us that creamy texture that we'd expect from our risotto. So let's get started preparing our butternut squash, and then we'll get ready to cook our dish. First, we're going to prepare a butternut squash. So I've got my squash that I rinsed off here. I have a very sharp chef's knife right here. You're gonna wanna use the biggest knife that you have to get all the way through your squash, and the sharper, the better. A dull knife is actually more dangerous because it's harder to make the cuts that you're intending to. So to start with our squash, we're going to cut off both ends, and you're gonna wanna apply a good amount of pressure to get all the way through your squash, always keeping your fingers above your knife. So we've got both ends, and now I'm going to cut it down the middle right here. Now that we have both halves of our squash, we're going to work on peeling. So you're gonna to wanna to set your squash on a flat end on the cutting board, and using my knife, I'm going to peel both halves of the squash. Now that we've got our two halves peeled, we're going to slice them into cubes and scoop out the seeds of the squash. This top part doesn't have any seeds. This bottom part is where we're going to be scooping those seeds out. As I mentioned before, you always wanna make sure you're keeping your hand on top of your knife or behind your knife to make sure that you finish your risotto with all of your fingers still intact. Here we've got the other two pieces of our squash and we're gonna scoop these seeds out. As you're cutting your pieces of squash, you do wanna make sure that they're as uniform as possible in size. I know that mine are not perfect. Yours do not have to be perfect either, but making sure that they're close in size to each other is gonna ensure they cook evenly and that they don't overcook or undercook in your slow cooker. Now we've got our seeds scooped out of our two halves. It's very similar to scooping seeds out of a pumpkin. If you ever carved a pumpkin as a kid, this will be a very similar feeling to that. Our next step is to mince our two shallots to prepare them to saute in a saucepan. So you wanna cut off the end of your shallot first, and then we'll peel our shallot. Here in our saucepan, we've got about one tablespoon of olive oil that has preheated over medium low heat. We're going to add in our chopped shallots and let them cook for about eight to 10 minutes until they're translucent.
Our shallots have cooked for a few minutes now, so they are more translucent than when they started. And this sizzling from the oil is what you want to hear when you originally add your shallots. I was a bit impatient, my oil wasn't hot enough, but it was fine, they got cooked through anyway. We're going to add a bit of salt and pepper, and then we'll get these shallots into our slow cooker. So we're adding about a half teaspoon of salt, and just a bit of cracked black pepper as well. This may look like a lot of salt, but we're not adding any other salt to our dish, to our rice or our squash, so it's going to bring that flavor into the entire risotto for us. Still over medium low heat, we're going to add a half cup of our chicken broth here, again low sodium. We're going to let this cook for just about two to three minutes on the stove. Instead of chicken broth, you're welcome to use a dry white wine if you have one. I didn't have one in my cabinet at this moment, so I'm just going to be using extra chicken stock instead. Here we have our slow cooker and it is not preheated. So we're going to add in our shallot and broth mixture that we finished on the stove. Next, we're adding in all of our cubed squash. And again, this squash is still completely uncooked. We didn't do any prep other than cubing it. We're going to add the rest of our chicken broth. We added a half cup. We're adding three and a half cups to this. This container is 32 ounces, which is four cups total, so I can just add the rest in. And a really cool trick with these containers is if you pour it this way with the spout on top, it won't glug as much for you. So it's going to be smoother and you won't get any broth splattered on yourself. And lastly, we're adding a cup and a half of our Arborio rice. I didn't do any prep for this, just measured it out into our bowl. It is uncooked and unrinsed. Alrighty, now we're gonna put the lid on our slow cooker, set it to high and let it cook for a few hours and then we'll come back to check on our dish. We've got our finished risotto right here. It did take about four hours to cook. It is going to vary in completion time by your slow cooker. So just make sure that about three, three and a half hours in, start giving it a quick glance. Once your liquid is all absorbed and your rice looks cooked through, that's when you're going to know that it is complete. So now that it's done, we're going to add this tablespoon of chopped fresh sage that we have and we're going to add our six ounces of goat cheese as well so I'm going to sprinkle in these crumbles here and this is another four ounce container so we're gonna add half of this we're gonna reserve about two ounces for topping our risotto. If you do not like goat cheese, you are welcome to use any other cheese that you would like. I actually did make this recipe for the first time with my mom, who does not like goat cheese, and she said that you couldn't even taste it and that this dish was delicious with that goat cheese mixed in, so you're welcome to try it. If it's not your favorite cheese, you might really enjoy it in this dish. We'll give it a quick stir. It is a quite creamy dish. As you can see, it does all come together and it blends quite well. And that butternut squash does break up a bit because it is fully cooked, but it tastes absolutely delicious. We've got our risotto all finished right here. It came out absolutely spectacular. You could definitely serve this to your friends, family, anybody at a dinner party. This is a beautiful dish and it came together so simply. And it does make a substantial amount, so you can freeze this. When it thaws out in the refrigerator, it is a bit moist, uh, so definitely reheat it thoroughly in the microwave and it's gonna get right back to that creamy, delicious texture. And everything that I used for this recipe is store brand, so you do not need to buy anything special, anything extra expensive for this recipe. It is very quick and easy to make and comes out beautifully. You can top it with extra goat cheese and fresh sage as well. And as always, hit the red subscribe button, give this video a big thumbs up. I will see you next Wednesday to bring your passport to your plate. Bye.